So in this video, I'm gonna do an unboxing of the GTX 1660 Super from Gainward. It's the Ghost OC version, so it does have a slightly higher clock speed in terms of compared to the normal Ghost version. And it does have 6GB of GDDR6X memory, just like any GTX 1660 Super, as well as all the NVIDIA features that you expect from GeForce Experience. And on the box, you only have the minimum system requirements as well. You don't really have the specification of the card itself or even any pictures of it. It's a really simple packaging design, but it's actually pretty high quality feeling, especially since the inner box is painted this black color, which just feels higher quality than a brown box. Now, once you open it, you'll actually get this warranty card, maybe from your distributor, at least here in Indonesia, and also this fully printed page which contains all the instructions on quick start, just like how to download the driver, like from the geforce.com website, which is much better than using the CD if some manufacturers include, because, you know, these days, who uses a CD anymore? And on the back here, you also have the certification statements or something like that. And also basically this whole piece of paper is a marketing piece because you can see all the other brands that Gainward sells as well. Now for the packaging itself, you can see it's made out of high quality foam. So it does feel really nice to the hand and it's also going to protect the cart really well because it's a closed cell foam and it should absorb shocks and vibrations from shipping really well so you shouldn't have any damage to your cart at all. Now the cart itself is in an anti-static plastic bag just like any other GPU that you buy these days and it's pretty standard as well. It doesn't have any bubble wrap to it but you don't really need it with that kind of packaging already built to the box. Now let's just open the plastic bag and take a look at the cart itself. So here's the card itself and as you can see the design is actually both complicated and simple. It's simple as in it doesn't have any color at all, it's just all black, mostly matte black. But it's kind of complicated because the color ha does have some kind of like metallic flakes which, do which does look pretty cool if you're into that. But then it also has lots of like shapes and uh, like dips and lines built into the shroud as well. And on the top here you also have the GeForce GTX logo which by the way is also LED lit. Now the backplate also is plastic, which is kind of unfortunate because it does make the whole card feel really, really cheap. It kind of rattles and makes lots of noises and creaks. But then you also get this 8-pin power connector as well as a big heatsink, so it should overclock really well just like any other GTX 1660 Super with similar cooling and power. And the heatsink itself does have two heat pipes which extend all the way to the ends of the heatsink which is actually quite large for a GTX 1660 Super and it does cool the memory as well as the VRM components as well using thermal pads so you shouldn't have any problems even though the heatsink is the only thing cooling the cart and not the backplate. And the backplate is also not helping with the airflow because as you can see the PCB ends right before the end of the backplate so it's kind of just trapping the heat behind the heatsink instead of just letting the airflow pass through the backplate if the backplate wasn't there. And the fans themselves are really large and it does cover a bit more than the heatsink because as you can see here the fans are larger than the heatsink and on the top part and on the back part it's actually blowing onto nothing and it's kind of just useless. And on the back here on the PCIe slot you can see a lot of venting because this is a horizontally oriented heatsink so lots of the heat is going to go out the front if they didn't block it off like that so it's actually kind of restrictive in terms of airflow this shroud design so I'm not really a big fan of that. There really isn't much space for the air to go out the front, so I don't know why they have to cover it up with that backplate like that. It's not really the greatest idea ever. Although from the back you can see you have lots of venting through the back, so lots of heat should have been exhausted right out of the back from your case because it has lots of venting. And this cart also seems to be pretty well designed in terms of heatsink size. It's really adequate for GTX 1660 Super as you can see. So I don't think temperatures are going to be a problem even though the backplate is not helping because it's plastic and it's kind of covering the airflow. And for the heatsink design as you can see it does extend all the way throughout the cart and has a really massive base plate that co covers and cools everything. So again temperature shouldn't really be a problem. The only thing I don't really like about this heatsink again is that the backplate is covering lots of the airflow and the shroud is kind of like restrictive on the front part. But the back part is pretty open, so it's kind of half restrictive on the front as you can see there. It's not really the biggest deal ever, I just don't like it because it feels like they didn't really think it through and it feels kind of cheap with the plastic back plate like this. I really don't like it, it feels like really cheap scratchy plastic and makes all kinds of creaking noises when you handle the card. It's not really the biggest deal ever because it's a cheap card, but when the colorful GTX 1660 Super has a metal back plate, you just kind of think that that card might be better. 
But for now, let's just test the temperatures for a while and as well as the fan noise and see how it does. So as you can see, this graphics card doesn't have a zero dBA fan mode. And here's the fan at 100% fan speed as well. It does get quite loud at 100%, but so does every card. It does spin at 3,500 RPM, so you have lots of cooling potential there. And here's at 50%, which is about 17 to like 1,900 RPM, which is kind of like the typical fan speed you'll see on auto setting. And here's the cart under load using auto fan setting, which is about like 17 to 1900 to just under 2000 RPM. It is a bit audible. It's not that loud though. It's, it's pretty good, especially since the temperatures are well below 70 degrees. Mostly hovers in the mid 60 degrees for most of the benchmark, which I'm just using Unigen Valley here. So all in all, I think the fan speed and temperature results are pretty good. This is a great choice for GTX 1660 Super if you can get past the plastic backplate, which is still the most annoying part of this card. It just makes the whole thing feels cheap. And I don't know who started using plastic backplates, but I don't think that's a great idea. So that's about it for this short unboxing and short test video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you do maybe click the like button and also maybe click subscribe to see more of my future videos on GPUs like this or news videos and GPU buying guides. But yeah, thank you for watching.